All right, welcome everybody. We'd like to uh, begin this June 9th meeting of the Budget Committee. Um, the first item on our agenda is an executive session, um, and I see our legal department is represented here. Um, so among the uh, four of us, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Did you want to do that, or did you want to entertain a different matter first? And you were just saying to me? No, no, no. That, no, okay. no, we're going to go this first. And I'll second that motion. Okay, all those Sorry. in favor? Aye. Aye. So anyway, so the, the first item we'll be discussing is ED8, Board of Education, $150,000 additional appropriation for the uh, Greenwich High School Coral Room roof. So Ron, welcome. Thank you. And thank you for uh, moving the agenda. Okay. It won't happen again. <laughs> All right, do you want to give us a uh, summary of, of what you're asking for and, and why? Well, we, um, we, we do have a roof program, and we had in our budget uh, last year $1.72 million uh, for a full roof replacement. May I approach? Yep. Um, <coughs> I had a PowerPoint. This is the same thing? Or what? Uh, no, 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 pretty much. This is the, the whole high school. Okay. Uh, so the original. Uh, just, thank yep. you. Right. I'll, I'll share with Leslie. Okay. <coughs> so uh, the original um, roof program for the high school was the gym area and this area coming out here, which includes the core roof space, which is right over here. Okay. So. Do you know which the gym? Area? So Sorry. yeah, if, if I mean I I pointed out this one because it's colorful. You know, so right. it's the same thing. Yeah, this is the this is without this is right. without the Mesa project because it wasn't right. originally in there related to right. Mesa. Correct. So this is the coral roof space. Yeah. This was the whole project for the one point seven two million. Right. This so the, from this area over? Correct. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No. This area no. over here. So coral roof is um, over here. That's okay. administration. <clears throat> Easier to understand. Oh. Mary Lee, I think this one is easier to understand. All right, I, I, if you can, yeah, I thought there might be a PowerPoint here tonight. Would you speak to it after me? So the coral roof is here. The full roof project, which is the gym, and inclusive of the coral roof, not including the science building, which is over there. Ron, would you mind if Leslie just kind of layered on using this sure. as well? And, and you're correct. This is this um, drawing is actually from the NISA package, but because it's in color, it may be easier for some to understand. It does include the new MISA building. And so this is the new MISA auditorium there. And this was the project that was to be done. It was the gym roof with the coral room down here in a mustard color in its outline. The gym doesn't say gym, but it's the white space. And correct. Yes. And and this just shows, quite frankly, in this drawing, this will be the new space that will be added, which would would have had its a new roof. All right. So Leslie, mm -hmm. given Mesa, um, how were they going to? So I'm assuming they were going to blend in the new roof, new construction with the existing coral room, right? That that's correct. I mean, remember that at the time, the right. board of education presented this. Um, they expected to have the new gym roof and the coral room completed, and then MISA would be adding additional new roofs with the space that was covering their new constructed space. Originally, MISA was going to. You're on. Originally, MISA was going to tie in. Whoa. Oh, sorry, maybe you, you, know, you don't have to get too yeah. close to it. Yeah. Okay, originally, MISA was going to tie in uh, to the roofs that we had replaced. Fast forward a little bit, we lost, we, the money was moved out of the budget last year in order to accommodate other needs. Um, so we had moved, I had moved it over to the 17-18 uh, year because we did some patching to get us through. Reason it went to 17-18, we wanted at that point for MISA to be completely finished and then we wanted to tie into MISA so we weren't competing for the same roof space. Uh, as the construction went along, it's determined that if we don't put this roof in at this time, we're going to ruin the finishes that are being put in underneath that space. So 
uh, for our point, it makes sense to take the money originally slated for Havemeyer, move it over to the high school as part of our roofing program, uh, do that work. We did some patching last year, but it's, it's not gonna last. We think we can get by with some patching in Havemeyer this year, and then put in for the, um, for the roof in Havemeyer next year. We will be reducing the 1718 request by a similar amount uh, that we will be moving over, moving around. So the numbers actually don't change in the total CIP project. May, right. may I just add one point yeah. to this? Yep. I, I think that Ron, you're correct that we one of the reasons it was moved out was because of the total budget. Another reason was it was it was going to be very difficult to get in to do the work on the on the gym coral roof because they were going to bring in a big crane cranes and at that point in time the DPW expected to be doing the remediation of the fields and there was going to be conflict with all the movement of the trucks um, in the western parking lot and the need to have the cranes and we we did expect going that. We did expect that the um, the remediation work would happen at the high school, and it would be a little difficult to get some contractors in and out. All right, so Ron, I'm, I'm a little confused here. The, the cost to do the coral roof is how much? It's estimated at this point at one uh, one hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars. So, in one regard, you could simply transfer not you could put off the Habermeyer roof of 150000 and put that towards this coral roof, so it's not an interim appropriation. Is that That's correct? what we're expecting. We're, we're leaving that to the BET to make the best decision on that. So if the, we would prefer to do the transfer and not an interim appropriation. Can I ask a question on that? Sure. So is it even a transfer uh, is a question I would ask. And if I could ask Roland and Peter how this works in other departments when, for example, there's a, a paving program or another generic program that spans over several years and a road fails and you have to move up a road and pave it earlier than you had planned to. How typically does that work? Does it rise to the level of a transfer or does the department just go ahead and make that switch? The department just makes that switch. But, you know, they, they lay out what they think they're going to do, but if something has to be moved up because the circumstances change, they move that up, something else moves up, but it's within the entire program I'm I'm comfortable with that if the uh, if the controller is comfortable representing to me that this is not a transfer but that this is funds that covers an umbrella project these are two elements of the umbrella and we're bringing forward into this year something that we thought we we're going to spend in a future year and taking something uh, from the current year and pushing it back to the future year and there's similar amounts yeah. but I need to be careful to be sure that you're comfortable that from a bookkeeping standpoint, I guess it's as good an expression as any, from a bookkeeping standpoint, that we can accommodate this funding without making a transfer of funds that the BET approves. I agree. And, and as long as you as the BET recognize that, like paving and this, roofs and other areas, they're programs. And as long as the BET is willing to accept it, you're giving them the, the, the latitude to, when emergencies, I think this is an emergency, is, yes. arise, You've got this ability to switch, whether it's a street that needs to be repaired immediately or a roof or whatever it may be. So I agree with uh, what you're saying. And I think they have, not only not only the school, the public works has that ability and should have that ability. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I, 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 I'll just make a comment. I have no problem them taking the money from the Havemeyer project and putting it into this, whether we have to formally transfer that or, or do we have to formally transfer that, or is that part I, of the... I, think, I, don't, I don't think there's any harm, and I think it ends okay. right here. I mean, Monday night... It makes, it, it makes yeah. a difference to me. I mean, I, I'm a little uncomfortable with the transfer. The, the urgency of this is very compelling. I don't want to have a situation, if I can avoid it, that to put something into a posture where I technically create the need to have an RTM approval, which can't happen until September, I feel like I'll be taking portions of the MESA project and I may be delaying it for as much as a year, which is undesirable. On the other hand, I don't like the concept that I take a capital appropriation, I delineate it, we present it to the RTM, the RTM approves it as a discrete individual capital project, and then in fact we use the funds for an entirely different project that the RTM never saw, 
never approved. Th that I find offensive. And so I find a charm in Mary Lee's suggestion that is it a transfer at all? If this was an approval and has been handled on the books of the town as being an umbrella project for roofing of several school buildings, and I'm merely taking elements of something that I approved, and I'm rejiggering the sequence in which they're being applied without changing the bookkeeping items on the town, then I like Mary Lee's suggestion. If you're telling me that this is on the books as a discrete capital project, and now the funds are going to be shifted to an entirely different discrete capital project, that for me is a problem. And so that's why I'm asking the control of the question of, is this, is this being handled on the books of the town as being the approval of an umbrella project for roofing of school buildings with certain elements being handled in certain years? Can I just privately talk, not privately, but yeah, discuss this with you? Yeah, right. these, these are projects after July 1st, and these yes, have already been assigned. Trying to insinuate yeah. that so do, do we actually mechanically have to change, to change the accounting no, numbers? No. 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 So that's what I'm saying. But I changed the name. Yeah. We actually have We just said roof. So that yeah. That's what we have to do. So this is not technically a transfer. I don't think it's appropriate to take funds that were approved as one capital project and transfer to something that we are To answer your question, we don't we don't recognize it as a transfer either, mechanically. But it requires internal accounting corrections to the names because the name Have Meyer Roof has been assigned a project number. But you can handle. You've got that. an appropriation in place. You can handle that without there being a formal vote of the BEG yes. authorizing a transfer. Yes. Well, then I think there's charm in Mary Lee's suggestion, and I would gratefully adopt it. All right. So let me just ask an additional question then. Um, from a precedent standpoint, do we, we as a budget committee, would we still want to see if next year the Board of Ed decides, okay, we really need to transfer them? When, instead of putting windows in the old Granite School, we really need them in the Riverside School, as, just as an example. Should we hear that request for a change? Or do we allow them to do it internally without coming before the budget committee? I, I think this. I think this is a major question about all these programs. I mean, I went through our budget and just looked at the highway maintenance program at a million five, the asphalt paving program at two million seven fifty, various town buildings two fifty. There's another, you know, town roof program, uh, separate from the BOE roof program. You know, if at some later point we want to talk about how we handle our programs. <coughs> Um, I think that's appropriate, but I think that, you know, the way Mary Lee has raised this, I mean, this is a program, in my opinion, they can move the, um, whatever it happens to be, roads or buildings or uh, roofs or whatever around um, restrooms, un unless we decide as a policy sometime, you know, for all departments. I don't think we should do anything different for the BOE than we've been doing for DPW, Parks, Parks and Rec, Rec etc. I think okay. that this so, is a, this is So a in your mind, you think, you're agreeing with Mary Lee that from our standpoint, we don't even have to formalize a transfer that, right. you know, we feel it's okay to... And that's what the controller is defining to you. Okay. I mean, maybe a refinement on a policy is really defining what a program is. Let's be very clear it's a program and then, you know, maybe there's some dollar value over which we want to hear about it. We don't necessarily have to bless it, but we want to know about it as a, as a board. Those may be two ways to refine a policy on this. And maybe it's a thought piece as we begin to talk about um, the budget guidelines letter. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think we're all in agreement. I mean, we'll vote on this formally later, but it sounds like we're okay with the fact that, you know, they'll be able to move funds within the, within the roof budget, if you will, the roof appropriations. And the, also, the, the motion for later, I think, would be that uh, we authorize the controller to make the adjustments uh, following his advice that it does not require a vote uh, uh, approving a transfer, nor a vote for an interim appropriation, but we authorize the bookkeeping adjustments that the controller described to us. Okay. And I'll make that motion later. Okay. We'll, we'll do that at, at, towards the end of it. Okay. Um, that's great. Right. Thank you. Now, Thank let's, you. are you going to? I'll be up ED here seven. for the next item. Yeah, but let's bring up ED7 now. Um, ED7 is uh, $625,000 capital carry forward for family and consumer science classroom work. Hi, Irene Parisi, Assistant Superintendent for Greenwich Public Schools. 
Welcome. Thank you. Do you want to review this for us? Sure. So um, in working with facilities and certainly the three middle schools, I had um, put forth a proposal to upgrade the, fa the family consumer science classrooms to um, mimic the workplace environment to support where we were going um, with teaching and learning and certainly aligning to the national standards. So as we engage in that process and that work, I certainly was on a learning curve, but as we began to work with the architects and develop the ed specifications, we realized that what we originally had planned was not going to be as conducive to the learning, the, the curriculum, and certainly um, we were fearful that the original program or the classroom design that we were developing was not going to have a lifespan of beyond five years. So we went back with working with the architects, working with the teachers, the principals, and certainly Ron and I, and um, then we evolved, the ed specs evolved to where we are now, um, where we required additional funding to build the three middle school family consumer science classrooms so they can support the curriculum, certainly where we want to go with career pathways and have a lifespan beyond five years. But you're not here asking us for any new funding now. You're yeah. asking to continue Carry in over. force funding that we previously approved. Right. So Do I have that correctly? Correct. We, had, we, we have asked in the present budget and has been approved additional funding for these programs so they could move forward. All right. And so you're taking the funding from the previous years plus the, the additional funding that was approved in the current year when right now we're continuing it in force for the upcoming year so you can do this work in the upcoming year. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions no. on that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we circle back to uh, Parks and Rec, uh, PR3, Parks and Rec, $125,000, release of conditions to replace Island Beach sidewalks. Joe Siciliano and Tom Greco, welcome. This was, a, this was the item that we discussed at the budget committee uh, meeting during our budget process that we had in our budget for 15 $125,000 to replace the sidewalks at Island Beach. And we talked about how we could kind of uh, talk about items that we could reduce our budget. We said this was an option to come back as an interim for, an interim for release uh, because we had a uh, we had an open uh, item for Storm Sandy that could cover the $125,000 for the repair of the storm damage to the sidewalks at Island Beach. So what we're here to do is ask for that release of 125 so that in September, as soon as the island closes, we would be able to commence with the replacement of the sidewalks. Was there money left from Sandy to cover this? Yes, that's what this is. This is okay. money that was retained in that account. So this was Sandy money. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me again, why did we condition it rather than just authorize it at the outset? Well, you had various, there were various release points of, of contractual work for Sandy. So as we were going through the work, you gave us a release of X amount of dollars, then we came back and asked for another interim uh, release of money, and um, that's how we were just operating, just because okay. you'd given us $3 million just kind of on an open end. Right. So we were coming back for releases. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Joseph. And that's why we're here to do this, this one, too. Just to layer on that, um, because I, I had asked Roland what exactly was the condition or the subject to release, and uh, it said it was subject to release and approval by the Board of Investment Taxation uh, of respective bids um, that you would receive on these various projects. Correct. All in was, you know, almost 3.1 million. Or, do you think the showing us the bids was intended for these sidewalks or was intended for the larger projects? Oh, no, it was for the larger project yeah. because we, had, we didn't even consider this as part of Storm Sandy money originally. We were going through the budget process to get the money appropriated in the 15, 16 year budget. And that's when we talked about using the open balance as an alternative mm -hmm. to fund this versus, so the, all the other bids were, were submitted. I mean, that's how we yeah. got the various releases right. of the mm -hmm. larger sums of money to do the work for Sandy. And we have we have we have a price I mean we this we have a we have a price on this right now of one of uh, 125 to do that. Is it one of the single vendor things we're going to approve list? Well, it's, it's a, already a pre-approved vendor yeah. right. okay. that okay. we have on a contract now. Right. Right. So they gave us a price of 125. And when that happens the the, the, the 
the method of the pricing, that's that's also um, engraved for the vendor. He has to so, he has to so, the so, many, so many dollars for so many feet of structure, sidewalk. Yeah, there's a structure price. There's a strike price structure that he has okay. to work within. Okay, so there's no bid per se. You just have a quote from a vendor from That's the correct. approved list on the accru approved formulation. Right, and he has okay. only appropriate assurances and okay. he's on the approved vendor. Okay. okay. You, you, you did raise something. In the original plan, there weren't sidewalks. It was just a restoration of, as I remember, we had several meetings on it. It was pretty devastated over there. But well, Island Beach was pretty devastated and, you know, we had a lot of, there are concrete walkways out there. They're, most of them are the original walkways, and you know, as 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 the, as the storm surge went over the top of the island, you know, we started to get some cracks, and then in two years we've had some settlement and some additional crack. Now, uh, yeah, I you know we're getting to the point where we we really need to repair them. We have potentially a liability going forward, and we recognize it. So, this is an opportune time to kind of get them done and. Put it behind us. So this really was just money left from that other project, and this deterioration has happened in the interim, and you're just trying to try I mean, and complete this with funds that remain, rather than returning those funds to the town. Right. Initially, yeah. there was some damage during the storm, you know, but it's it's settled down now, and there's some additional cracks that are showing, and we really should do something about it, either budget for it or or fund it this way. Okay. That's that's it. Okay. Okay. Any other questions on this one? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank, thank you, Jim. Thank you. We will see you in a little bit. Uh, next item is PD 13, Police Department, $20,800 approval to use tuition payments. Chief Heavey, welcome. So this is broken down into two items. Um, one is that uh, we have four officers attending a regional academy, and they've they've gotten to the same uh, funding plan as the state and they now charge tuition which was uh, unexpected although we we did provide instructors in kind in the past and that was the only expense for that uh, and then the other is a uh, uh, we've been collaborating with Roger Williams University to provide uh, some training for our middle managers and we were able to get an opportunity to actually have that done on site which was at a considerable reduced cost um, just recently so these two items um, are being requested out of the asset forfeiture, which we have uh, approximately $160,000 in. So this $25,000 will cover these two educational requirements. We also have the um, proceeds from a, a vehicle that was in REMD from a drug case uh, for approximately $25,000. So we'll be uh, putting that money back shortly once we get the, uh, the, sell, the sale of the car. So. Um, so for fiscal year 16, bless you. Bless you. Okay. Uh, for fiscal year 16, have you did you put money in the budget for tuition? Yes, there is uh, an, an, an amount uh, the same as uh, very close to what it was this year. But this is a uh, this was an opportunity we've been trying to get uh, okay. the collabor you know get yeah. them to teach it. So it ended up uh, we had uh, a total of uh, eight of our officers and six officers from other uh, departments in Fairfield County. But they actually provided the instructor instructors down here. So. Okay. Rather than have to send people and put hotels and oh, sure. meals and everything yeah, else. Yeah. So. Okay. Any other questions? Um, the um, so the officers, uh, the four uh, young men who uh, young people who've been uh, two and two, two females and two yes, uh, males. Yeah, I, I, I need to be brought <laughs> into the twenty first century. Uh, so the four young people who've gone to the academy, uh, they've already attended. We've already paid that tuition. No, we haven't paid it yet. So we would be. All right. Uh, and the uh, middle management training was this uh, middle management training. Um, these people have already attended that training. We just we just completed the training, correct? And have we paid for that? Again, we're waiting. We're, we gotten. We haven't got the invoice yet, but we will before right. the end of the fiscal year. All right. Um, but uh, would there be funds? Uh, leaving aside this asset forfeiture issue, there are funds to cover both of them in the existing budget as mm -hmm. we set it out for the current year. No. No. Um, That's why it's a. All right. Um, Okay. The the, um, the eight thousand dollars was um, unforeseen. They they hadn't previously asked for that, and the other monies we had hoped that that would be able to be taken care of in the tuition uh, funds. But once we got to a point where we knew what we had left, we knew we didn't have enough. So that's why we're coming for the these. four candidates at the academy are already there at the academy. They started uh, two weeks ago. Okay, and the middle management training is that already started? That, too? That's already started. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Chief. 
your backups. Uh, next item is uh, PW4 from the uh, Department of Public Works, $665,000 additional appropriation for townwide restroom rehabilitation, specifically Grass Island. Welcome, Amy. Hello. Hi. Does this seem like a PNZ meeting to you? Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> um, the Grass Island Locker Building um, has a very long history. It was first identified in 2000 as part of the townwide uh, restroom rehabilitation program uh, due to its four, uh, poor facility index score. And, uh, the existing building that's down here today is 2,900 square feet. It's a wood structure on slab. And the building is sited with asbestos containing shingles that needs to be properly abated. Um, it's an inter integral component of the Grass Island Marina. All the electric components that feed the marina, the docks, come out of this building. Um, the initial concept of the building redesign for replacement was developed in 2007 and uh, was given over to Parks and Rec for review, which they got back to us in 2008. It's, this is going back some time. Uh, they approved it, but uh, subsequently had issues at Great Captain's Island. <coughs> with the restrooms out there and our focus shifted from Grass Island to a more immediate need at Grass Island. And then again in, 2000, um, in 2009, we um, started a, a second delay because the restrooms at Greenwich Point, out, way out in the point which we call the number six, the septic field failed. We couldn't replace the septic field without upgrading the building, so another restroom project interceded. With the uh, number six construction underway, um, we resumed the design uh, for Grass Island, which was completed. And at that time, FEMA had the uh, base flood elevation established at 11. The grade at Grass Island is 9.6, so we were still looking at a very small difference, and we could do a slap on great building. Based on the numbers we were getting for the other two restrooms, we felt confident uh, for a $600,000 appropriation, which we, was, we submitted and was approved in 2011-2012 budget. And any funds that were left over from the number six construction would be used as a contingency. Um, in mid-2012, prior to Sandy, FEMA released their proposed grade elevations for the base flood elevation. And then when Sandy finally hit in October 2012, um, that building went about 30 inches underwater, uh, which showed a need to heed the FEMA flood elevations. So um, we went back and looked at the building and started discussing how it'd be senseless to put a slab on grade and be subject to flooding, plus we wouldn't get through planning and zoning. So we went back and redesigned a raised structure. Um, the Six building, feet the, off the, the, ground. The, the, the base flood elevation now is 13. Regulations require me to have the bottom structure uh, a foot above the base flood elevation, which sets the main floor at 16 feet, which is about eight feet above the ground, or six feet above the ground. Six feet four inches above the nine six, right? And the building has to be totally ADA accessible uh, with ramping, and that's one in 12, so we're talking about an extremely long ramp, and there's codes dealing with landings and such with that. Um, we got MI status for the new drawings. We went to planning and zoning um, in July of last year. With this final approval through ARC and everything, um, we went and completed the new construction drawings and the necessary environmental and soil bearing tests out at Grass Island. While we didn't find any problems with soil contamination, we did find that the soil bearing capacity, the soil on the, um, on the peninsula would not support the right structure. So we had to go back and do a pile design. So now we have to install piles. Um, this all happened right at the same time that we were finishing up our budgets and we were in no position to add it to our budget. So we finished up the drawings and we went to bid in um, March and the low bid was received at $1,249,913. There was five bids in total, some of as high as um, one point six million dollars, six one point six seven seven million dollars, and everything was in between. Um, we have five hundred eighty-six thousand left from the original six hundred thousand dollar appropriation, which we used for some redesign, 
and we still have a uh, old account for restroom rehabilitation. Um, this number slightly differs, is different than what's in Munis because we're fixing some restrooms uh, with my own crew. Is that the 172,000 from 2008? Yeah, the 08052 uh, account. Um, we're saying that we're going to be doing the men's room in the fall. We just finished the ladies' room on um, Island Beach with our internal crews. So we have about $711,000 left. So if we put a reestablish the contingency, we're looking for roughly $665,000. We realize this has to go to the RTM, but we would get on their agenda first thing in September. We got purchasing to hold these bids for us until October 1st. All right, let me step back a minute. Go ahead. The programming of this building. What, what the building right now currently has restrooms and what? A locker room? The, the, right now the building has a men's and ladies room. It has a locker room, electrical room, and a covered porch. Okay. Talk to me about the locker room. Is that currently, are there lockers rented out to? No, it's empty. Parks and Rec have, has stopped renting the lockers out years ago. So we are not including a locker building in the new building. So, so the new building comprises what? Uh, the new building comprises of a men's and ladies room, an electrical room, a small storage room, and a covered porch. Um, and that allows us to get the ramping up that we need to spin around the building. Okay, and so how many square feet is that? It's 2,400. The new building mm -hmm. is 2,490. The old building was 2,903, so the new building is smaller. All right, so for the roughly... 1.375 million dollars divided by 2,500 square feet, roughly. That's 550 dollars a square foot. With the contingency, yes. Now I went through what we've done. So in 2007, Great Captain's Island was 456 dollars a square foot. In 2010 and 11, the Mianus River Dockmaster Building on Strickland Road, which is a similar building, was 383 dollars a square foot. And the number 12, or the number 6 restroom in 2012 was $485 a square foot. Okay. Were they on piles? Or no. No, this is all slab on grade for the comparables you just told us about. Okay. The only difference is great captains and number 6 had septic fields that had to be put in with them. They also don't have electrical rooms. And they don't have big electrical rooms. This, um, the electrical room in Glass Island is going to be a 400 amp three-phase service with most of the power going to the docks. This building stands six and a half feet off the ground. This one here, it does. Um, and, and you're talking about a 10 percent contingency. Is that we traditionally ask for 10 percent contingency on new construction? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the main questions we're going to have, I'm assuming, is is why does this need to be an additional appropriation now? Yeah. So okay, let me step back. Understand you didn't have the numbers put together for fiscal year 16 budget, so that's why it was not in the capital plan. Um, if the great wisdom of the BET decided we're not going to give you an additional appropriation, what would you do over the next year until the following fiscal year 17? What we would do is continue with our um, restroom rehabil rehabilitation of the um, Island Beach um, men's room with the funds we have in the old 28052 account, sit on the 12 135 account and wait to be part of the new budget year and, put it back out and then put it back out to bid okay. and hopefully the bids would come in is there, is there a restroom there now can the old building be used or the old building's it? being used oh the old building is the being old used. Building's this being is used. just the replacement this of is the existing. replacement so that still can be used and so if you go to this other program that you're talking about doing you know this is a restroom program, right? Like we were talking about mm -hmm. room programs. Um, they'll still continue to be a restroom there and all these, you know, and you'll just work on other restroom projects. Well, we have that one that we're doing, and well, we're doing internally because we have the money. Okay. <clears throat> you know, the, the labor's lost because it's town employees, and all we're doing is buying supplies. If you but got I'm, I'm more concerned about the bid because we, yeah. we you know, the bids, right. the bids are, you know, we got them held, and I'm just going to go through these. Um, our low bid, we had one bid for 1.387, 1,600,000, 7, 7, and one for 1,595,000. Five. We figured so, it was at least worth bringing forward. 
if in your wisdom you decided you wanted it in the CIP next year, That's we point. can do that, but we had numbers in our hands. Yeah. So we is might it, as well ask. Is it your view that these numbers are particularly attractive? Um, based on the fact that we have to put the piles in and dig up that parking lot down there, because one of the issues is currently the transformer, the high voltage transformer, is sitting at ground level. Um, it had to be replaced at Sandy. Um, we would be lifting that up on a telephone pole so it would be out of the course of the water and we're trenching across the parking lot to feed the building. So the fact that we were able to get all this work in for that price and the piles. So are you saying that you think that this is a particularly attractive bid that is not likely is. to be replicated a year from now? I, I, or eight, I, I can't eight guarantee it. Can't I can't that. guarantee it. No, I'm not asking for guarantees. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Are, are you enthralled with this bid? Because other, otherwise, th there is a certain value in not encouraging a lot of interim appropriations, yeah, but doing things no, in the CIP in an orderly way at a time when we have tax for projects, et cetera. You know, um, hey, you're asking my opinion, and yeah. it's ultimately your decision. Okay. Um, Alan, are there any other major projects in the future happening in Grand Grass Island? I mean, other than there is another one we'll talk about carry forward, but that's for the treatment plant. But around that, the boat storage area and all that, is there any other work that needs no, to be No, the only thing that that's down there besides the boat yard is the um, maintenance shed, which is in pretty good condition. And the locker, um, there's a gatehouse, a small gatehouse, <coughs> that this project's actually going to refeed um, electric and phone service to. Okay. The, one of the capital projects that we had put off a year or two ago was flooding. Was that that maintenance building or was that the water treatment plant? No, that was more that was at the maintenance building. 50000 for flooding in front of the maintenance. And we put that off, right? Okay. Okay. Al, if you did get the money, uh, give, could you give me the timeline? How would this proceed? What would be at a commission for how long? Well, in, in built into the specifications, the contractor has to provide uh, port johns during the whole course of the project. Um, we would probably, um, we're going to keep the electric portion of the building up and demo the rest of the building. All the asbestos cost is incorporated into this price. So um, we would be able to do that with the boats in the yard because we were able to work in where the building is. And then once the boats, we could probably do our pile driving. So <coughs> we'd be into the next spring. And then once the boats left for spring of uh, 2016, we would trench across the lot and finish up. The project could be finished by fall of next year. It's probably a one-year project. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. yeah. Um, Sorry. You know, Amy, you've talked about, um, we'll call them temporary restrooms or whatever, rolling restrooms, and I know we've talked about this, you know, for the, say, the Havemeyer building. Rather than, you know, as an alternative to spending a million three seventy-five. At some point, is it worth exploring something like that? Because you wouldn't have to necessarily build it to FEMA standards, I assume. That you know, where, where? I mean, let's call that an experiment, which we, the town, hasn't done yet. And you said some of these are very nice. I haven't looked at them, but you know, I certainly. But I'd like your input on you know as an alternative to a. <coughs> I have a couple of things there. Um, you have an electrical room that you need. You've got certain things that you need down there that are in that building. Uh, I think what we've seen is that the concept of these more portable facilities is not popular among, you know, our customers. And for that, I look back at Joe, you know, and it's not typically been something that people wish to pursue. It's something that, you know, could it be looked at? I, you know, anything could. Um, but, you know, it can be, it can be difficult to sell. Uh, you know, just talking about removing restrooms or having seasonal restrooms is, you know, sort of gives me the same kind of press as when I talk about making people put their leaves in bags. You know, it's, it's uh, well, this I want my head on a stick. So. This is certainly is seasonal, and I just thought that, and right. because of the issues now right. with FEMA and construction and the cost and bringing it up over five hundred and fifty dollars per square foot, that maybe you know at some point in time it's worth looking at experiments, just sort of for fun here. 
one of the things that I did was I went to the assessor's office and, and asked um, single family homes in the town of Greenwich, just you know for the, the improvements, the home itself, not the land they're under, which is exactly what this would be. You know, how much is our you know, average home in Greenwich? Um, you know, the full value. And um, so for the median was actually 341000 under $341,000, which means the homes, over half of our single, or half of, exactly half of our single family homes have a full market value of 340000 or less. The, the average, you know, is, is higher. It's more than double that. It's, it's 779000 but I put that in perspective with the cost of, you know, a restroom at Grass Island. I mean, this isn't Greenwich Point or whatever. It and it's seasonal. It's waterfront property, though. Right. It's, it's, waterfront. There, it's waterfront property. That's right. but, but anyway, I just, um, I think it's we something the, to think about. We can about. put the you units know, down a trial basis money. with the signs saying they're Tarkington units, <laughs> uh, Tarkington <laughs> facilities. And again, don't forget, you still need to have some location for yep. that electric <clears throat> Building. Well, you, know, you don't get you don't get to just get. It's not a place where we could get rid of everything. Yeah. Uh, and and the electrical yeah. building is used for what, Amy or, or what Al? I mean, whatever. The electric down there services the docks in the marina. The docks for the marinas. Each um, of the slips has a, a power outlet that the yeah. boat uses. They rent the facility, but they want to, they expect to have a water line and an electric feed and whatnot. That's what they're yeah. paying for. Do they pay enough, Jeff? Yeah, I have no idea. I, 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 I will point out that, that I will point out that it is a waterfront park. I mean, there's a, there's a yeah. park component of that, and and um, there are a lot of I don't know how many boats, dock slips are rented down there, and, and moorings and all that. And it's it is a park. Um, so even having a little porch in the front is probably not. I've seen people use that as I've driven by there and stuff. Yeah, and it's kind of nice. They're all cowering. Right. And it the building, it the, shelter, a the building is at the point of the harbor. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. the first thing you see when you come into the harbor, besides the, the homes yeah, right. that line the harbor. It's yeah. the first public building. And we get it. It's difficult. You know, we have had that discussion, certainly, about where should you have facilities or should you put things back. And, you know, we do talk about it, certainly. Well, how much commonality is there between this and the Greenwich Boat and Yacht Club or whatever, you know, of no. people. There's no, there's no commonality there's no, of people? No, no Greenwich Boat and Yacht Club Separate has their own building and their own dock facility. And the Grass Island side, you know, we have probably 400 boaters that frequent that facility, whether they're slips or outwater moorings. Yeah. And it's our prime transient spot for people that come into town because we by law are required yeah. to have that. And uh, one other thing is that, it, that the electrical system controls our ice heaters in the winter so that we don't lose, uh, you know, we protect our docks and tiles and that kind of stuff. So it's very important to have that, that electrical feed in order to power up all of those uh, ice heaters and such. Okay, bubblers that uh, bubblers? Yeah. Joe, Joe, there's a 125-foot yacht currently yes. docked temporarily, I'm assuming, down there. Do we charge them for oh, yes. So would they like to use the Tarkington porta bodies? Yeah. Would they like to use the Tarkington porta bodies? <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe we could do a deal that we could use their boat. We could go back. Yeah, to the yeah we have a boat there for a while. Okay. Let, let's move on. Yep. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, if we can. Yep. Next one is uh, PW five fifty thousand dollars transfer uh, general maintenance of buildings. Um. No, I can start. Um, our 400s cover a lot of things and a lot of buildings for a lot of different departments. And over the last couple of years, the requirements to maintain or do inspections that are required by law have been increasing. And all that, all those services come from this budget. <clears throat> so this budget um, handles the elevators the yearly generator inspections and all the repairs that come from those inspections. All the security systems here at Town Hall and we do, my division does maintain the Town Hall, the Town security system. Um, we had uh, to replace the front steps here at Town Hall due to the, the severe winter weather. We lost the air conditioning here on the second floor just recently for $23,000. 
all the fire extinguishers and all the town buildings except for schools the sprinkler maintenance and upgrades as those inspections are done have to be completed the overhead door hits at all the fire stations um, anything that has to do with sewer laterals because the sewer department does not do that work for us for free we pay and we have to pay with the contractor and we don't get sewer has their own problems so we don't unless we have a real problem we handle ourselves um, fixing the exhaust system at the uh, pistol range um, water treatment on the cooling towers and all the boilers we had to replace another air conditioner at the Costco um, fire station um, and the list just goes on uh, the barriers at the police station the security barriers that come up and down we have a murky the jail system. cells doors so we, we have a murkiness sometimes between how you, how, where you draw the line between capital items on replacements of capital components of buildings and repairs so that I have some departments on which we're looking at items and we're dealing with them as capital items uh, air conditioning units for some of the school buildings for example um, and here is an example of a situation in which um, we're picking it up under operating as right. maintenance budget. Uh, and it's a little hard to try and draw the line between the two. I'd like to avoid getting into a situation where I'm really taking capital items not being put through the CIP and we're calling them maintenance and paying for that. So uh, we're replacing the air conditioning at the fire sta at the Costco fire station, the town hall second floor, the town hall phone room. We're replacing a chiller at the senior center. Uh, we're repairing, I don't know what it involves, the <clears throat> marble stairs right here at the front of town hall. Uh, I'm replacing the exhaust system at the police pistol range and things. Um, uh, hard to draw the line sometimes with these things. We no, use. Uh, sorry, but ahead. what I was going to say is something that, you know, we used to carry, uh, give you an example of what you folks have, have, have done with one budget, sewer budget used to carry a certain amount of money in the 400s for sewer repair for sort of large, you know, larger sewer emergencies. Uh, before I came to town, it was carried in the capital budget, then it was put in the operating budget, and then y'all took it back out of the operating budget and you created a capital project that's like a little sewer maintenance number that may be needed, may not be needed, in, right. you know, substantially in any given year, but you put it back in capital for sewer. Um, so I hear what you're saying, uh, and I think that's certainly a, a bigger discussion. You know, I guess I'd like to say for today's purposes, you know, this is where he's been doing that work, where BCNM has been doing that work for, gosh, ever since I've been here, is in those line items. And we're just hoping that we can transfer, we have funds in a utility line that we can transfer within the operating budget from the 200s into our 400s to get him whole so that next year where you can see that he did request uh, more money there's more money in next year's budget to cover all these programmatic inspections and you know uh, uh, reviews and maintenance of all these myriad systems to bring that more in alignment with what it's what it really costs. You guys went through every contract and you were looking down at, you know, we have 80 of these, we have 18 of these, and we have 20 of these, and here's how much it costs. There's so no we, problem with the programmatic inspections, but, that, but yeah. when I have a savings I on a you. utility line and $50,000 not spent, um, uh, I, I want to be a little cautious about then just taking items that we might have otherwise called capital, but we'll but call we it maintenance. But we haven't called them capital, Jeff. We've been doing this this way for years. So if, so what I'm trying to say is if you want to have that discussion, my suggestion would be would we... Next should February. We, should yeah. we have that? Well, or not even in February. Yeah. Should we be having it earlier so you all tell us how you want to handle it? Because yeah. how's it going to fit into the capital and model? How's it, going to, how's it going to work? Because that would be in probably in many areas. Where are you going to draw the line? How do you want to define so it? So let me wipe, let me wipe out my concerns with a, with, with a question. Maybe a, a quick answer from Al. So items as the ones that you're characterizing in the second to last paragraph, the ones that I was quoting from, yep. are those typically items that you've been paying for out of a maintenance 400 line budget? Forever. Yeah. Forever. Um, and so this is not, not something unique. The only time that we've ever come back for capital is if it exceeds $25,000. All these items, air conditioners, like the air conditioner here on the second floor, was $17,000. The items 
are traditionally under twenty-five thousand dollars. There's just a lot of twenty-five thousand okay. dollar items. Okay, you can bid. Probably yeah. the more important thing is, yeah. I mean, from the county standpoint, Roland, do, do you, this is kind of what we've been doing, and it's not a, a major concern. No. It is. When we went to uh, get thirty-four reported, we increased the capital threshold to ten thousand dollars per unit of equipment to twenty-five thousand dollars for improvement. Okay. And that's what we've been sticking to. And what's okay. left in electrical? 50, Once that. you take oh. that out, take out the 50. I mean, oh, you're good. gosh. Uh, oh, we didn't even write that I I, We didn't even write it down. But when we looked at the, you know, we always do our balance towards the end of the year here. You're, with all, you're how good that to go. We were okay yeah. with that. You're we not coming back forecast. for the shortfall in electrical. No, okay. no, <laughs> no, but you're not the only department who's switched out of, transferred out of electrical. Well, utilities, yeah. you know. Right. You do your best to forecast them. You right. see how the winter treats you, how the whole season treats you, and you go on. Okay. Last question. Was yeah. It? No, actually, I was going to make a yes. comment. I think that the memos. Again, I've said this before, but the memos that come from you and your department in DPW are always very helpful and detailed. And I thank you. Uh, just one final thing. Yeah. We're, we're closing as of this month um, several Z accounts, capital accounts. And returning two hundred thirty-six thousand dollars for for BC now. There are others that are also closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You try to butter us up with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've done board of ads. So next one is a PL two Parrot Library seventeen thousand transfer, unanticipated prior year expenditures. Welcome, sir. Good You're Kevin, right? Yes, Kevin McClay, director of the library. Um, here tonight to correct an error I made last month. Um, it's because you weren't here. Somebody I else was here, right? Yeah. Um, Linda White, our assistant yeah. director, appeared uh, in my absence. And uh, we had requested at that time a transfer of $20,000 from our library book uh, uh, allocation to cover snow and ice. Uh, subsequently, we discovered that that caused a shortfall in our 300s. So I'm here tonight to request a transfer of 10,000 from our 400 accounts, which is the um, uh, unused building uh, materials, and also uh, $7,000 from electric service to cover the anticipated shortfall in our 300s. And the shortfall in the 300s is what? Uh, seven, it's sixteen thousand nine hundred thirty-one dollars and fifty-eight cents. What's the subject cents. matter? <laughs> I'm sorry. What's the subject matter of it? Uh, it's uh, library books. Oh. What we discovered, and I'm working with my vendor now to correct this, is we received a slew of invoices um, that were for items we had ordered, but we did not receive the invoices until this current fiscal year. And I'm working with them to make sure that they're much more timely okay. with those. Okay. Any questions on this? Great. Kevin, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad it wasn't an ADP issue. Yeah. Um, all right. Now that brings us into the uh, capital carry forward request. Um, first one is SE 11, First Selectman's Office. Uh, 11 million nine hundred thousand uh, dollars regarding the 800 megahertz radio system and trunked radio good evening Hi. so give us an update on the uh, radio system replacement uh, we're about three months behind where I'd like to be which you know for a four-year project is not too terrible uh, last year about this time we as actually, as soon as the largest part of the money hit the budget last July 1st, we immediately advanced uh, an RFP to replace the wireless backhaul that runs between the radio sites, something that we're, which is about a $500,000 project, but it's sort of a, the first thing we have to do. That system has to be in place so that when we put the, ra the, the large portion of the radio system infrastructure at the bid, we can say in that document, by the way, all our radio sites are connected with an XYZ system. Uh, so we, we put that out to bid in last August, I think. We had vendor presentations last October. Uh, no, last November. We got, we, all the bids were due in October. We scored the bids in October. We had vendor presentations in 
late November, it might have been the first week of December, and actually the week between <coughs> Christmas and New Year's made a vendor selection, the panel met, and we picked a particular, we interviewed three companies all together, and since December we've been trying to negotiate a contract with them between the purchasing department and the law department. It's been a little uh, trying, but we're close. I mean, literally, I, I hold in my hand today's latest cut of, actually dated June 3rd, but I got it today in an email so that, you know, we discuss it every day. We're very close to awarding this particular contract. When it, when it goes out, uh, and I think actually today we may have finalized up the last of the issues between us and the town and the vendor. Um, and as soon as we get that, the, the RFP is for the larger part of the system, which we hoped to have out by now, is actually already written. It's about 100 pages, uh, they're just a scope of work part. That doesn't include the, the you know, additional 25 or 30 pages of boilerplate and how many numerous pages of uh, law department stuff to go with it. But it will be, you know, a 200 page RFP easily. Um, and that's already written, except for the blank lines that say, by the way, our backhaul is provided by XYZ vendor. So that that's, as soon as we resolve this contract, uh, we anticipate that quarter three and quarter four of this year will start to replace those microwave connections between the, the radio sites. Um, that, that meshes well with, get, we're going to have to give the vendors that bid on the radio system project several months to respond because they'll produce you know, large proposals of hundreds of pages uh, and we'll have to evaluate those. So, Mark, was there an issue with antennas or was that one of the earlier stages that has already been accomplished or didn't you have to find some new locations or new antennas and so Well, a, a lot of that's going to come down to what um, what the vendors say and what they think they can cover with the existing, we, we may have somebody put in a bid that says, you know, we don't need all of your current sites, we need less, we need more. I mean, the, 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 however the engineering for the system works out. There are some infrastructure sites that exist that we aren't on currently that we, we could go on if we want to. Actually, with the cooperation of uh, uh, the former and now current, the former town planner and now the current town planner, pretty much any time you build anything tall in this town, we have a right as a condition of zoning to put public safety antennas on it. So all of these uh, you know, cell tower locations and things that have gone up all over town, you know, we have a right to be on them as the town for public safety equipment if we want to. I mean, I, I can tell you right now that we probably, as a part of this project, will build a site down at exit two on the existing Verizon monopine that's down there that replaced the AT&T flagpole. Um, we will, I'm almost certain any radio vendor that comes to visit us and analyzes our coverage currently would say, gee, you have a right to go there. We're, we're, we're certainly gonna build a site there because our coverage down there is deficient, even with the existing system. Mm -hmm. So in, until those RFPs come back, I, I don't, I mean, I'm, 99% certain that we're definitely going to stay on the hospital site, the Bruce Golf Course site, which we own, and the state site. I don't think we're going to with the police department either in the next few years, so. It's not the, it's not the CFP? No. Okay. Um, I have another just general question, and not to put Ben on the spot, given that you're new. Um, but, you know, we're always concerned about coordination. I mean, who's leading this whole project? And, and you know, you've done a great job. You know, John Crary, before he left, was kind of organizing some of this. I mean, do we have a clear delineation of who's kind of driving this whole thing? I mean, is it really the police department? Is it? The, well, we currently administer and operate the system, so we have the most technical knowledge about it. But it is a town-wide system and a town-wide asset. We're far from the only users of the system. In fact, the Department of Public Works is actually the largest user of the system. It really sort of depends on how you define largest user of the system, too. From a, from a number of actual individual radio transmissions push to talk standpoints, the police department's the longest user of the system. From a n amount of airtime used up, it's actually DPW, mostly because the police department tends to say things like, 
10 floor and in route and stuff like that and dpw says longer things like you know don't forget to bring two shovels and <laughs> right so they, they 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 say longer stuff the sewer's not working help <laughs> exactly so um it is again pd fd gems dpw parks and rec literally every town department that, that runs a radio soon to be board of ed as well we'll, we'll have you know a, a, at least a hundred and probably 150 new board of ed subscribers when this thing's ready to go online so um yeah it is a town-wide asset just because the police department administers it we recognize that you know we have a, a customer base and that's why the board of estimate taxation in their infinite wisdom when the police department asked for money to replace the radio system said no 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 we're not going to give it to you we're going to give it to the office of the first selectman which is why Mr. Mr. And the Brian applicant here is the office of the first selectman. Correct. The police I, I just want to make sure there's coordination going on and everybody's yeah. happy with it. Ben the needs to get up to speed on it. Yeah, this is day seven for me in this new capacity. And, uh, so what's taking you so long? Exactly. <laughs> I already have a meeting scheduled with Captain Quarter to go, okay. over, the, go over the project and we'll meet next week. Okay. And, Watch out uh, for him. One of the first things, uh, first selectman test, he said as well, is this is one of my projects so yeah. because of the internet. Departmental uh, yeah. crossing there. Yes. I have a question. So, given the timeline, Captain, that you outlined, how much cash are you going to need in starting in January? And Mr. Minarski is the one who usually asks this question in house as we go out to bond for various projects. But I'm just trying to understand the cash flow that goes along with this four year project. Um, if I had to guess we'll need to start paying for the new microwave backhaul you know as, as soon as it's installed because it's in terms of that contract so um when's that that's that's the part that we'll do in in you know the last half of this year uh, the, the contract that we're hoping to sign right now and that'll be a, about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars round numbers per hop and there are, and we'll do three right away and probably at least two later on in the project. And they'll be paid so, for in the last six months of this calendar year. The and six they'll be the paid for this, yeah, the last six months of this calendar year, okay. yeah, four hundred fifty thousand okay. dollars round numbers. Um, we'll probably also, hopefully, by the spring, make the award of uh, you know, the major infrastructure piece to replace the actual back end of the radio system, uh, and. Depending on how we award that and what the terms of that contract are, there may be some cash requirements that go with that, you know, a day one payment to whoever wins the bid. Okay. okay. I'm fine. I'm good. All right. Um, I, I entertain a motion to move up PD 12 since we've got the police department here. So moved. Yeah, although I don't know that that's marked. That's PD not me. 12 this is, is, uh, uh, first is, is the, no, is the right. dock. 11. Um, Chief, are you going to talk about that, or is that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Um, we can get the chief out here. It's just yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Sure. Um, well, say what, I, then I'd move that be advanced. I already did. Uh, I second. second. Oh, we need to do it. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's do I appreciate that. Um, again, this is a request for a carryover funding for capital projects, and it, it includes a, a, a additional docking facility at the Marine Division for the amount of $34,330. And um, this was approved uh, by the previous town administrator um, to allow Roberge Associates Coastal Engineers to handle all of the licensing and engineering part of it and actual the uh, construction of the dock. Um, and that was delayed mostly due to weather. So. Uh, it is something that's needed, but we were just weren't able to uh, accomplish it during this uh, harsh winter we had. And this will allow uh, all the three police vessels and the um, the other parks and rec vessels that are on our dock to uh, to all fit. Okay. And once again, we're continuing in forest funds that we already yeah. approved. Correct. Capital carry forward. All right. Any questions? Chief, thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Leave while you can. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next one is uh, PR4, Parks and Rec. Um, $90,000 capital carry forward Bible Street fencing and retaining wall. Gentlemen. Um, so this is actually a project from 2014. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, PR four is the uh, um, is is uh, the Bible Street fencing and and retaining wall, which is in uh, uh, which is in need of repair. I mean, it, it isn't. Um, it, it's not an immediate structural concern in terms of its uh, safety and aspects and so on, um, but we are concerned about it long term. So it, it it really has to be addressed. Interestingly enough, we've um, we, we've been trying furiously. There's so much work going on around town. The approved vendors are, uh, have all been contacted to come out and take a look. We've got one one response. Uh, we're not terribly happy with it, so we're waiting for a, a, so, another. So, Tom, one. I mean, I'm just looking at the sentence that you write. Okay. Uh, I haven't gone out to take a look at anything. You say the fence system is currently functional. However, the retaining wall that supports it needs to be repaired, but the retaining wall is, is a, what a slowly crumbling thing. Given the fact that you're not getting a very hearty response from the contractors, and given the fact that the fencing system basically is functional, we just have a deteriorating concrete well, base on which it sits, is it an item that maybe it just is happy put off for a year, even two? Uh, the fence? Yeah. Uh, well, once once we attack the the retaining wall, the fence is going no, to no, be no, 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 I know, but I'm, no, but not to attack the retaining. wall. What if you took the whole project and put it over for a year or two? Um, uh, you have a functional fence. It's sitting on a concrete wall which is deteriorating, and as it deteriorates, the fence will deteriorate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But right. it's not something which is happening overnight, and you're not getting a very happy response from eligible contractors. Maybe that's a cue to you to wait for a year, wait for two years. I mean, just because we're, getting, we're not getting a big response from a contractor, uh, we only had one response, we're searching another one. We'll wait is for that, is, If we let the wall go, yeah. the fence will eventually need it, to be replaced, so then the price will be more than 90000 You know, it'll be, it'll be more, it'll be, it'll, it'll probably most likely be more than 90000 because we're going to have to replace some sections of the fence. That was the theory at the beginning, is that replace the wall, Sure, up the wall, do whatever little fencing needs to be done. Uh, I, I'm misunderstanding. So, so, so for the ninety thousand, you're not replacing all the uh, all the concrete base and oh, the God. fencing. You're no, doing some sections. This is just a repair in sections. I see. And it's, so, it's, it's actually a rubble stone wall yeah. that is set in concrete that would have to be repointed. Blocks have to be uh, stones have to be reset. And the more it deteriorates, the more we jeopardize the fence fabric. Oh, yeah, 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 no, yeah. Now I understand. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. We're just curious. This has already been appropriate. I, I know, but I was seeing an opportunity to delay something, but, but I was misunderstanding yeah, the it's project. Just a yeah. It's a timing issue, okay. and uh, we're competing with in-house vendors that, okay. you know, are probably doing more important I, I, I apologize. Yeah, I misunderstood the project. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you. All right, next item is uh, PR5, 25000 for replacing the steel workboat. We've been looking at this, and uh, you know, we've been looking at the market of used boats, new design boats. We think we, you know, the used boat market really, there's been nothing that's come through that's been satisfactory to our needs. We really don't want to buy a boat that just mediocrely fits our needs. I mean, we're buying a boat. Let's let's buy the right piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. We looked at some specifications uh, from a local boat builder um, that could meet the um, um, what, we, what our needs are. And we may have to come back and talk because the, we've got some preliminary pricing and, this is, and we don't have a formal price yet. But in the discussions, we have a range and the range is going to be $45,000 or $50,000 to do to build a boat that we really would like. Um, so we may have to come back at a later date and talk to you about an additional appropriation. We're trying to refine that right now and get a solid solid. So there's nothing on the on the used market, if you will. You know, no. there's a lot, of, a lot of boats out there that are, but uh, you know, nothing that would really suit our needs. We're looking for a night, you know, kind of a small ice breaking type push boat. And again, they're in. If we find something that remotely resembles what we're looking, they're in Louisiana. <laughs> they're in <laughs> South Carolina. You know, I mean, the, the transporting, the visits, the marine surveying, all that other stuff to buy a used boat at this price is really, yeah. it's crazy. You know, how, we're not how buying big? it. How big? How big? Uh, if I remember correctly, it's in a 25 it's in the, foot it, range. It's about right. Okay. Just the boat that has the big uh, it has a big push, push, push thing in the front. Push yeah. on the front, yeah. yeah. So we'll do a little bit more research. We'll try to firm up a price, but we're going to have to have a secondary conversation on, on that one. First morning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. PR6, 35000 for uh, Pineum Gate. Okay. Well, we are going to put the gate in because now we have the lights that have been put in place. And the electrical, 
uh, conduits that have been put in place. So uh, this is just a matter of getting it in the queue and doing it. Um, again, this is be a big asset to us. We are having some experience right now with electronic gate at the mm -hmm. Prescott Park, which you know when the timing when the timer works, it works great. So this is working out the bugs a little bit, but I, I'm confident that this would be an asset to us in order to open open and close that park. Uh, we work collectively with Eversource or CLNP uh, to get the uh, lights positioned in the park and some of the underground conduits have been placed. So we're we're ready to go as soon as we can get this up and running. Okay. Uh, PR seven playground inspection and upgrade. Interestingly enough, if I may, uh, we were quite concerned about getting an invoice in time for the. To, to uh, for the closing and so on, um, but since so we, we we submitted this as a request to, to carry over. Uh, since that request was in, was uh, was forwarded, we've already got twelve thousand uh, dollars charged against this. To, so this is kind of redundant, um, unnecessary, because uh, we we spent the, the we put twelve thousand dollars against this on a seventy thousand dollar project already. Since we submitted the right, form, right, right. So, gotcha. so Pete, does, does he, I don't know do how they withdraw it no. now? No. But you're still going to be spending the remainder of the 170. Oh, oh, absolutely. No, I, yeah, yeah. I think he, what he's saying is, is they didn't need to put this on here because they started the project this year. That's what, what I mean. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's what I mean. And my question is, do because we, of that, do they it, just withdraw this need, now and we just? And we don't need to continue it yeah. because it's encumbered. Because it's already correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'd say they just withdraw it. We weren't sure what was Okay, happening. so what, should we just withdraw it? Tomorrow we can send a note requesting Okay, it. Well, why don't we just withdraw it and okay. that's one last thing in the minutes. So we... Right. The, uh, the uh, boat motor, uh, obviously without the boat, we are still a hold on the motor for the boat. So uh, this number can is I... actually a good number but uh, for the boat, for the motor, but uh, we can't buy it. We're not going to buy it until we get the design of the boat. Uh, issue straight down. So that's just a holdover because we haven't selected a voter or a up for purchasing. It's an outboard? Yes, it yes. is. Oh, <coughs> large outboard. I, I, it's like I, 150 I, horsepower Yamaha. And they cost 150? It costs 20000 Well, you're going to get it mounted on a bracket. You're going to get the controls. controls. You're going to get all that kind of stuff. It, it's going to be in the $18,000 range plus, probably. Yeah, that's right. Okay, thank you. All right, PR9 uh, launch ramp. Uh, launch ramp at Costco. We're waiting for the permits. Uh, it's been submitted to the DEP. DEP. We're just waiting for the permits to uh, be approved by the DEP. And once that uh, are approved, we'll commit to do the work. Obviously, we're not going to do it during the middle of the voting season, but if approved prior to the end of the voting season uh, in October, we would then commence and do the work before the next okay. season. So. Um, Joe, are there any, the next one is also launch ramp related. Are there any synergies with that? Are they two separate things or one's in Byron, one's in Costco? Yeah, this is the, this is the, um, the, the preliminary work to get the oh, permits. Okay. This, we did this differently here and mm -hmm. I guess we should. Because of the park? I guess we learned our, from our experience of waiting for this one. At two, we budgeted $250,000 for the permits and the work. This one we came back and said just let's have the money for the permit. And then in this year's budget, we have the money in the 15-16 budget for the actual uh, ramp construction. Okay. So we actually did it a little bit differently, but that's that's what happened. Okay, okay great. Wait, wait, wait. Any other questions? No. No. Chairman, thank you. Thank you. Amy L. Yeah. Have a good evening. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Can you look on the bright side? You could be a new Lebanon school right now listening to. Uh, oh, is being that being pilloried they by the community, first? actually. Oh, yeah. those poor souls. Yeah. Oh, my gracious. They came with vegetables, I believe. Oh, my goodness. That's a. All right, next one is PW6, 200,000 right. uh, capital want carry me to forward for talk Civic Center. Do you want to talk on Greenwich or you want to talk on Greenwich? Just go. I'll, <coughs> whatever you want. Uh, I'll they just go. These. Did you notice that? Uh, that's right. That's right. Well, the bulk of these I'll yeah. deal with. Okay. So Old Greenwich uh, Civic Center Heating System, you guys may recall, you put that in the budget to provide Al with funds in case he had a necessary repair there since that building, uh, rather than, you know, pay for the full, uh, full freight there. So 
fortunately he hasn't had to use it yet, but he still might have to use it. So we're asking for that to be carried over. It's not cold out um, right now. And not right now, but it will be. Uh, and we didn't put anything uh, special in the budget. And that was 14, right? That's a 14. Item. Correct. Yes. Correct. So, over, so we're carrying over again. So keep doing your good juju for you know the uh, for this next <coughs> winter, and you know hopefully we'll make it. But can I just stop here and ask? Yeah. Um, Roland, have you checked all of these carry um, forwards that are not 15, but in the earlier years, like 14, to make sure that we've approved they were all, all those? Last year's. They yeah. were all last year. I, I, I checked also last year's minutes have most okay. of these. Thank Roland. you for checking. Right. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Right, sir. Townwide, um, townwide roof replacement. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Alan is working on the specs for the Sound Beach uh, fire station roof replacement. Um, you're hoping to get that out sometime summer in the fall uh, so that's a program to roll that over uh, don't know if you have any questions so you it's, want to keep rolling it's, or? it's for a broader subject matter than just sound beach what are you guessing sound beach is going to cost it's actually town hall and sound beach were identified okay. as, as items this goes back to the conversation earlier about programs right we say roof replacement program and we identified sound just beach and town hall said, okay. in this year and the two together, you think might be six fifty? Definitely, this building would definitely be almost four hundred thousand dollars. Okay, at Sound Beach might be two fifty. Two fifty ish. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. you can't throw in a coral recital room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next one then is. Then we'd uh, really be talking about accounting what's where, right? Yeah. yeah. Be like, Just want to keep these guys busy. Right? <laughs> That's right. Uh, stormwater. This stormwater master planning money. Uh, when we, you know we've been continuing to work with the Army Corps on the Byram study, uh, we were out ahead. Actually, we're supposed you know with the Byram study that we're doing with the Corps, we have a 50-50 cost share. We try to make sure that no one's you know out in front of the other in terms of spending. We have been uh, had better funding than the Corps themselves, uh, so we had been hanging on to this money because the Corps didn't you know kept saying we don't have funding, we don't have funding, we don't have funding. And lo and behold, uh, just very recently, we did find out that they do have funding now. So we're going to be able to put this money to use on that study. Uh, but we were holding it to, for a while to determine where they were. Um, frontage Road, any questions on that one? Or no. am I running to the next one? Okay. okay. Yep. Uh, frontage Road intersection improvements. Uh, this is a project that uh, you've heard about for a, a while here. Um, we're 100% designed. We're waiting on Connecticut DOT uh, for our project agreement. Um, you know, as we said here, we'll go to bid when that agreement is forthcoming from them. Uh, we can't predict when that will be. It's frustrating for us. We've been ready for a while. Uh, but that's sometimes the nature of the beast with these. You folks have heard about bridge projects and other things that are, they go into Connecticut DOT and can take a while for them to come back out of DOT. Uh, so they had done, gosh, last year, I think in the fall, they had done a little bit of back and forth, so maybe minor little design tweaks, and we're still waiting uh, to get that agreement. The next items are very similar again. 100% uh, reimbursable. Correct. Is a charming sentence in there. That's Correct. So okay. when we actually do get to do it, right. Uh, we will we give do them, pay for it, and then later on they and pay they will back. give us uh, the funding. Round Hill Road bridge replacement, uh, the same issue here. We're at 100% completion of design. We're waiting on our project agreement with Connecticut DOT. That is a bridge that will be 80% reimbursable. Uh, so that's a positive thing. But again, we have to wait on that agreement before we can get these things out to bid, so that we can get money encumbered. Uh, the stormwater drainage and maintenance uh, funds that we have, um, we worked with purchasing. We needed to get some new service contracts for for storm drain inspection. We use it actually for storm drain and for sewer inspection. We were not real pleased with the. Uh, we had only one outfit uh, on our books uh, over the past year here, and they were not as uh, responsive, shall we say, as we like. So we now have three outfits, so we can really under good service agreement so we can pit them against each other and now is the time when we can start getting out um, and it it's kind of like some of these other projects we the service agreements have finally gotten through purchasing and gotten to contract so we didn't have a chance to get up things encumbered up yet but we'll do that be doing on that lot of that this summer uh, into the fall CMAC uh, looks very similar to 
it's not so much the agreement, but uh, we are again waiting on final state of Connecticut, you know, the Connecticut DOT approval for our design. Um, it is a tough project. This is what you might, if you recall, this is for that adaptive signal control down in that exit three area. So a lot of time and energy spent on the design, a lot of review, uh, a lot of analysis there. Connecticut DOT is taking their stab at making sure they're, you know, fully happy with it. And then we can get that out to bid and get that going. Do you have to know what CMAC stands for? Uh, congestion manage, okay, manage, manage. management or something and, or, and air quality. So these are the projects that are that are funded 100%. This is also a project that's 100% reimbursable uh, for us. Um, these just take time to get them through. Um, the E1 grinder pump, something uh, that Rich Feminel is dying to get to. As you all know, <coughs> he had a bit of a uh, different change in plans with our uh, large horse neck sewer work that they pulled off successfully over the fall. Good. Thank um, you. you know, and, and of course, some of his other large projects that, you know, he's scrambling to get them all in order given that extra work of the fall. Uh, so this is still very important for us to attend to. I'm going to see if I can't find some spare time myself. I was thinking about them the other day. We got to get this taken care of. We're trying to figure out the best way. This is a ticklish project. So it's, this it's is a, from 2014. Right, right. But it is important for us to get to it. We, um, so we. And we, we had a considerable storm. Your, it wasn't Sandy, but it was Irene or something. We've where had some where it's been had really a power ugly. Failure. We it's, had a series of houses uh, with no septic. Right, and, right. And yeah. it and it's difficult because you sure. you want to rehab these these panels, but you're also trying to say to yourself, you know, should you know what's the best way to use the funds? Is it to redo the panels? Is it to do we rebate them? Do we do the work? Do we get them to do the work? You know, there's some policy and legal ripples in here uh, that make it, you know, time consuming, unfortunately. It's, uh, so it's so I have one. a question here. Mm -hmm. um, the, these panels, even though they're for the North Mianas and I said also for Millbrook, I mean, Correct. Um, people in sort they're being paid for now by all the people in the sewer maintenance fund anyone who's within the sewer district well that will not the not just the people who have the sewer line right well you know once you have your you know this is now sewer division infrastructure you know so it is a difficult issue and we've talked about uh also what should we make this a uh when people put in their pumps let me put it this way when people put in their pumps uh there was a certain stipend they got if they had a certain amount of rock and it was just a stipend if you needed to spend five thousand dollars on rock all you got from us was a thousand dollars so when we look at this number we're looking at well are we we need to retrofit these panels for our benefit and they're you're right they're on people's homes but it's like having 350 plus individual pump stations and so the sewer budget funds the large common pump stations, in a sense, would be funding these these individual pump stations. We'd be delighted to give them back to the owners. We'd be delighted to have the owners take care of them. We have to figure out how do we do this best. Do we make, uh, again, can we come up with a project where we look at Mary Lee and we go, you know, you've got one. This is what you need to do. We're buying the panel. You know, you can take our stipend or leave it. If you leave it, we're not coming out for you anymore. If you do your panel and you do whatever special changes you may decide you want, you know, we got to work all that out. And that is very, you can imagine it's very ticklish because some people will be very easy to deal with and some people, you know, people will not. So, Thank you. <coughs> I, I'd just like to make another comment here, though. Here's the example, this, you know, and I understand the issues with some of these delays, but this is the first one we've come to. Generally, you know, what happens is we appropriate the money. It hasn't been spent now for one, two, or three years. That's why everyone's here. But then when the project is done, we'll take it to the capital markets and fund it. Pete will do his good, fine work. But in this case, when we, you know, in another 15 days, this will be 60% paid already by the taxpayers in the sewer district. So because of our pay as you go, and I do think that, you know, we have to be very careful in terms of, particularly I think in, in this sewer maintenance fund, 
of only appropriating when we seriously are going to spend the money because there is this disparity in how this is funded. But, you know, this is basically 60% advance funded by now and, and I, you know, by the taxpayers. And I think that we just, it's something that we need to look at more when we go to next year's budget, you know, in, in, in February. Okay, OG common. So the force. old Greenwich common force main improvements. If you cast your mind back to uh, the budget season, we talked about. Rich had talked about how he had forecast. We had forecast originally replacing certain segments. We broke the old Greenwich common force main into segments. Right. We had an initial plan uh, and design approach for how we were going to replace those segments, and we forecast that in the budget and we put the funds in as we anticipated it in the budget for that. Upon examining sections, I think this is 9A and 9, they determined they needed to break it into two segments. Actually, that's when we took 9 and built, took it into 9A and like 9B. We needed to, we could move forward with 9A, 9B needs to com be combined with like 10 and maybe even 11 and done on their own as a design package. So what that did was it sort of rejiggered our, our approach for how to move that force main project forward. We need this money in the budget because we will be coming into you actually in 1670. We have, first of all, we have a lot of design going on. We may be picking up some of this in some design in, as we come into this next fiscal year. But then we're also coming into a point where we explain to you, we're not at, we didn't ask you for force main money for 15, 16, because we can use design out of here and we can get forward. But in 16, 17, we're gonna bring you that big nut because we're, we weren't able to put it into these nice bite size, even pieces. It wasn't like two million, two million, two million. It's like two million and then all of a sudden, bloop, you know, we're gonna need like six or something. Is like that what you think? That the I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. So that, that number. Order of magnitude, it's in the vicinity. It's, it, if you look at the forecast that yeah. we gave you in the CIP, it's yeah. in there. And okay. it shows you what Rich anticipated that we're going to need. Right. Because what I can tell you is, okay, we're looking at the segments. They did the segment from the Costco pump station through, you know, along Strickland, along, uh, along through the uh, Sound Beach, you know, through the uh, Costco. Uh, train station and you know uh, not sound beach um, sound shore thank you sound shore okay now the next segment that's designed it was actually bid and it's been awarded is the segment that goes from sound shore and it goes underneath uh, Indian Field Road it'll be jacked under Indian Field Road and it'll come up uh, on the south side of the railroad property there See, that section we had originally anticipated doing that jacking under the road and the section that goes along the railroad together. We figured out we couldn't get that done together in, and get <coughs> keep everything moving in the best way and, and put them together. But that section all along the railroad, then it goes underneath the water. Uh, you know, we the want water to keep everything moving. That, well, that yeah. water that uh, feeds into Bruce Park, thank you. Um, and comes out at the Bruce Park pump station, that segment along there, those segments are gonna be done as a group. So that's why that becomes a larger project uh, while we get those done together and have that design package being organized. In the meantime, at least getting that jacking it under the railroads. So it's, a, it's a complex. Yeah. Does that have to be coordinated with uh, CLMP? Because they're, they're doing their major. We have we have been talking to them about too. what they'd like to do for their transmission system. Obviously, we're dealing with Metro North. We're dealing with Condot. Uh, pretty much everybody, mm -hmm. you know, I, every utility. Is, it's great. It's it's a pretty wild project. But uh, so that's why we're asking for this to be held over. Um, the uh, uh, I, I, again, I'm just mm -hmm. going to stop here again because this is yet another example. It's you know basically 40 percent funded. Um, in advance to, by the taxpayers. Right, and, and, and that gets back to your discussions about whether, how you decide whether you want to bond things, the arguments or discussions, I shouldn't say arguments, the discussions over, you know, how you want to handle managing a capital reserve account and so on and so forth for sewer. But, but on the carryovers, it gets accentuated just because you, you, you tax year one, you tax year two, tax year three, it's divided in five versus, you know, basically what's our other five-year bonding is really over eight years. And so um, 
this is in advance. I, I just want, I, I don't have any more. You can go on. <laughs> um, grass the, island. the Grass Island Wastewater Treatment Plant upgrade, they've got their 100% design that they're reviewing. They're anticipating to get out to bid here over the summer. So uh, that's an important project that we're doing there to address, uh, I believe that's our final clarifiers. Um, and that takes that us that's it. to the yep. end. Any other questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. Do you want to deal with the votes on these first, or do you want to wait yeah, until we've no, done? Let's, let's, let's go back. <clears throat> so I'm going to propose as follows. Is that a good place to start? Shall I well, uh, or what I mean, do you want to let, do? let me just kind of look here. So we've had the executive session for two things. Mm -hmm. And there's no vote required for either one of them. Correct. So <clears throat> PR3, Parks and Rec. I was going to call that routine. Uh, not everybody may agree with me, but I'm going to call that routine. That's the sidewalks over, over at Island Beach. Yeah. That's uh, I was going to call PD13 routine. I was going to call uh, Public Works 4 non-routine. Yeah, because we're going to have a... Yeah, a I thought they were a conversation. It's, you know, yeah. a million two or whatever it is of uh, restroom work. Yeah. Uh, I was going to call PW5 uh, routine. I was going to call the coral roof non-routine. I was going to make a motion on that at the appropriate time. Okay. Question, do we actually vote on that as such, or how I'm only do we proposing. handle that? I'm only proposing. Well, we'll, we'll so, get to it. We're just yeah. kind of di okay. differentiating routine versus non-routine. Yeah. Right, right now. so obviously additional appropriations should be non-routine, yeah. which you're suggesting. How about transfers? Are those really routine? Well, I'm going to... Um, uh, following your lead, maybe you'd like to make the motion, Mary Lee, but, uh, but uh, right. whoever makes the motion, that I was going to make a motion that it be neither transfer nor... Transfer could be either way. Okay. I think that given the dollar amount, that could be and, routine. And I'm proposing okay. that it not be handled as a transfer. I'm going to be... Uh, 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 I'm going to propose in the motion... Yeah, I'm, you're talking about a different one. You're talking about um, PW5? No, I'm talking about ED8. That's where I thought we were. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about ones that oh, are clearly transfers, which are stated as such here, DP. PW, PW5, uh, and PL2. Yeah, I was going to call those both routine. Right, and I'm just questioning whether transfers are routine or non-routine. Okay. okay. I mean, I'd support doing a routine. Okay. On those. Uh, I was going to, on the uh, on the carryovers, we have one item being withdrawn, PR7 on oh, the well, next page. Oh, let's go page. to S Sorry. SE11. The okay, on ones. all the rest of those, on every single one, I was going to propose it be routine including the nearly $12 million of the um, uh, 800 megahertz radio system. Are maybe from the, other, do maybe from the dollar amount, you're not comfortable Leslie, with that. No, no, yeah. I, Leslie or Mary Lee, do you think, I mean, I, I'm looking over the list and I don't see anything that was contentious. Um, some of these have been already transferred one time from 2014. But you confirmed that we took care of it correctly yeah. and, and, yeah. and also Roland said the same thing. I, Think that that makes it routine? Oh, I'm no? just looking. The 1314 piece of the radio system was not on last year's agenda, and sometimes we interpret this since the project had started because we were doing design work before. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we say you know, it's like we have demolition and then we have the construction. Well, we started the project. So it's encumbered. Years. So it's encumbered. But it was sure. not encumbered. No. So why don't, so maybe we just make that one non-routine, but I don't have any issue with it. Whatever you like. You know, make the rest of them routine and that one non-routine because of that one questionable thing. I, I, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. I'm guys, fine with it. I mean, okay, I, let's, okay. Typically, typically what we've done is if any one of us is uncomfortable with routine, we've marked it non-routine. No, I, but I'm and not. And if Leslie's uncomfortable. No, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm just making it. I'm okay. not terribly uncomfortable. I, you know, I just yeah, raise the issue. I, I'm fine. If you guys are okay with the item, I may do a routine um, carryover as a separate item on the agenda because a lot of our members weren't here, number one, number two. Although you're in favor of them, I don't care if we want, but I want to have at least everybody to have a chance to have a discussion if they want to pick out an item. Uh, in other words, hypothetically, if I have an issue with PW13, I'm here to go with that. Okay. And I want to make a comment or I want to ask a question on it. So we normally have routine items, so I'm sort of thinking about keeping those together, and then all these carry forwards, even though we may want to consider them routine, I think. Okay, I mean, I, I can, for the committee, address 
what we heard, if somebody does have a question, then, then why why is this so easy? Because otherwise, you know, yeah. you'll be your computer will be yeah, slow. Uh, this way, we can sort of put those items on the table. That's only something we usually do once a year, and that's, you know, okay. charter, so. so. Why don't we, for the time being, we carry forward the Cinder all routine? Okay. 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 So let's go back up to the top then. Okay. Um, so uh, item one and, and SE2 of item two don't require a vote. Correct. So PR, PR3. So PR3, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, I move that it be approved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 As, a, as a routine item. As a routine item. Yeah. Uh, P, sorry. P3, PD13. So PD13. I move that it be approved as a routine item. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. PW4. I move that it be approved as a non-routine item. Mm. I, you know, I'd like and, to comment here. I, I, I think that, um, again, the size of this, this is, you know, overall, it, you know, a million three plus, almost, you know. Um, I think that um, we should consider this in our, with our capital items for next year. And I am not comfortable with Increasing so, so this. We're just having a pre-discussion, so I'll, I'll carry on your comment. So are you done? Sorry, are you done? Well, I mean, I just want to. I, I, I just, I think at, at five hundred and fifty dollars a square foot, um, as an interim, that it should be put with other items. I mean, that's just my feeling on this one. So. So you think it should be held until fiscal year seventeen? Not be approved at this time. Not approved at yeah. this time. I would agree with that. Um, given that we understood that the restrooms are currently open, I, mean, they're, I was worried about porta potties having to go there for the next two years. Um, but I don't, A, like the idea of additional appropriations and something like this, which is not real essential. They probably could have done a better job getting into the fiscal year 16 as a capital item. Um, I would. So you've changed my mind. I'm, I, I'm going to move that it not be approved as a non routine item. Can I ask a question? So this would have this would come out of capital non recurring. Yes, yeah, this was this was capital non recurring. And what's in that now? What's we've left? got six million dollars right now, with the nine hundred fifty thousand dollars that we got for tax credits out of up to almost seven million dollars. But that is not an item we can finance I, either. I'm, I'm not suggesting sure. one way or the other. I just want to know right. that end of the equation. Um, I also kind of got it from Alan and, and um, Amy. Amy. Amy, thank you, um, that they weren't really pushing hard for it. I mean, it'd be nice to do, and, and if we thought we had a lot of extra funds to do it, but I'm kind of on principle, I, I'd mm -hmm. like to not. The only descending point from Alan, just to be fair, although yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to stay with you on my vote. As he points out, that it's 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 a building at risk if you were to have another serious storm. It's at nine feet six inches. But it's already kind of bad shape anyway. Oh yeah, no question. It would yeah. disappear with the next yeah, yeah. <laughs> storm tide. Yeah. Plus, quite yeah. frankly, I mean, I think given the some of the yeah, things maybe, yeah. that he has underway, I would rather see Al's not that he can't Finish do many things, restaurants. but I think that that the um, there's a lot of work to be done on the Byron Beach and I really would like his focus there um, certainly central fire there must be a lot of questions and you know um, so, coming so, up on so that. my motion is that this not be brought as a non routine item and I'm moving that it not be not that we not that we recommend the BET non approval so just I'm sorry just to continue the discussion his oh, electrical is not at risk right we established that. No, he's not at risk. He's not at risk. He's got it up on a pole. He's, it's right. feeding the dock. Yep. Um, and there is a use for this money elsewhere, which he outlined. Okay. All right, so your motion is to not approve. I recommend not second. approval by the BET. Okay, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So that item got a zero four vote. Zero four. Yeah. So therefore, four zero. What's that? No, it won't be. But but um, Mike, the way it was presented was it would be a four zero. But he presented it in a negative fashion. Yeah. But why? Uh, why but, is it? Sorry. Right. Sorry. You finish Just your comment. Help me for a second. You're talking about PW four. Yes. Yeah. As I'm understanding it, that's an item asking you for an additional appropriation. Right. And zero of you support it. Four of you do not support it. That's correct. 
Okay, whatever you want to do. Um, if we have to yeah. pass it in order for it to go to the agenda. Okay, general. gotcha. Okay, carry on. Um, so PW5. PW5. I'm recommending its approval as a routine item. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 EDA. Yeah, I'm, EDA. I'm, I'm recommending its approval as a non-routine item. I'm sorry, no. no. I'm going to make a motion on this, and the motion is that it be handled as neither a transfer nor as an additional appropriation, but in accordance with the advice uh, from our controller, it is merely an application of funds from an addition, from an existing account. It's in an existing, I would say, an existing roof program, whatever you want to call it. Shouldn't you say that? Well, so do we just turn it down? No. No. Well, no. what? Why well, no, would we're, we... we're approving the expenditure of funds. We're indicating the approval of the expenditure of funds, but we're indicating it's neither an additional appropriation nor a transfer. But, that the, but we're acknowledging that there's going to be a change in the account entries for the funds to be moved from one account within the umbrella to another for the expenditure. That's what, Pete, Pete do I have? My wording is awkward. Uh, but you can just you assist me? You, you, you indicated that you were showing the dollars right now under, un, under a specific numbered account. But and I, it would have to be moved to a different numbered account under the same I, number. I would make sure, and if you want to do it as a you know, detailed motion, Change that you do name. say that it's a roof program, you know, in the roof program, which is exactly where it is. A change in the... Okay, I'll look up the, the, the project right now is called roofs. It doesn't say okay. any names or anything. It just says roofs. You have my, to go to the detail to see... My motion is that we approve this as neither a transfer nor an additional appropriation, but for the expenditure of funds under the existing roofs account. The only thing is we never approve on an interim basis any of the items within um, a program. Correct. So now you're saying something that creates a precedent that we've never had before under any of our programs. I, you know, if, if you want to have some kind of resolution, I think you could say that it's neither this, this um, budget committee has determined that this is neither a transfer nor a, um, an addition. That's what I'm saying. Why don't, why don't we not approve it and right. make a comment that this should be done as an internal accounting change? The not approving it looks fine. as if we are denying the expenditure of funds for the, for the repair of the coral roof. I don't want to leave that well, in. Ordinarily, the they wouldn't have even come to us. Right. Correct. But they did. But they didn't so withdraw it either. So that's what I'm saying. We did not approve it. No, the item is before you, and if you if, if if your vote on it is not approved, it sounds it has the appearance as if you are not approving the expenditure of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to make the repair and replacement of the coral. Well, room. we're not approving an additional appropriation, and we're suggesting they use or a transfer or a transfer. We're, we're suggesting they use current funds. So let's say that and vote the approval of that. So it's clear that we're, we're, we're approving the expenditure of funds, but it's being handled in that way. Neither an additional appropriation nor a transfer, but we're authorizing the expenditure of funds. No, but do, I, I, I wouldn't say authorizing, but, it, but um, acknowledge that it's being handled, but what we acknowledge is being handled within no the BOE's roof program. No problem, but I want to vote on that. I'll second that. It, with that sort okay. of change okay. so, in language. Yeah. So why don't you try to say that again so Kathy... You want to say it. it again, Jeff? Um, Can you say it again? Uh, we're, acknowledging, <laughs> we're acknowledging the expenditure of the $150,000 uh, for the uh, repair of the uh, roof over the uh, coral... You want to say 150 Because in, the, in these funds, they're always... We're being asked, we were being asked for 150 Can Yeah, I want to say 100 We're, we're okay. acknowledging the expenditure of the $150,000 uh, although it's neither a transfer nor an additional appropriation. Can I ask a question? Sure. From a procedural standpoint, can we just remove the item as, a, as an application and, or reclassify it as a discussion item or a disclosure item? Because we're, uh, I'm sympathetic to Leslie's point in how we want to characterize this. Um, Yet I don't want to set a precedent for any sort of motion that has to be voted on for a simple use of funds within a program. But that's why I'm wondering if we deny, we, we vote against this. I think you need to create a, a, a murkiness as to what, what, what has been authorized and what hasn't. Well, the minutes can certainly clarify murkiness, uh, as can your report at the full BET meeting. Yeah. Um, I throw that out there as 
you know, for those who are good on parliamentary procedure, if we can either withdraw or reclassify this particular application? It, it seems to me that we can always ask them to withdraw it because it came to us in a format that really wasn't applicable. Um, and we could make a motion that we've asked them to withdraw this because it's neither an additional appropriation nor a... Right, but the problem is we didn't ask them to withdraw it. No, we, can't we, we still have, do that? We want, well, not here. let's deal with this now. Um, okay. We can have Roland call. I would rather... What do you guys think? I, I would rather support by a vote um, uh, a motion which acknowledges the, the, um, the expenditure of the funds on the coral roof out of the existing roofs project money. Okay, but, but yes. We don't have to vote on that. We don't mm -hmm. have to vote on a use of appropriated funds within a program. I agree with Mary Lee. I think that, you know, and you have to be careful about setting a precedent. I mean, I think that it was great that they came here because it made everyone think about this and, it, and, it, and talk about it and, you know, get input from Roland and Pete and Mike and a lot of other people. But I think we also have to be very careful about setting precedents that we don't necessarily want to look into. So, uh, so uh, ask a question. That, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I, I'm not trying to create a problem. Um, Pete, you said that the dollars presently are in a specific numbered account, and that to um, apply them instead to the uh, Greenwich High School coral roof requires that the funds be applied instead to a slightly different numbered account. Can you do that? Are well, you authorized would, to do that from what you've had, already had before us if we I don't take a vote? just withdraw the item. Just withdraw it. I can't the money's appropriated. I can't withdraw it because and the withdrawal we has to come from the applicant. The applicant isn't here. I, 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 don't, I thought the applicant was directed to put this on the agenda. Mm -hmm. No? Yes, you're right, 100%. I don't think they willingly came put this on. They were told to put it on. Well, and I think my, that gave it. I'm putting program. you on the spot. I'm saying, what do you, you need? You withdraw the item and... I thought that the I conversation can't, I can't an hour ago was... I can't withdraw the item. What action, if any, would you require None. from the four people sitting in front of you None. for you to be able to make the application to funds to the coral roof? Do you need anything from us for that? Okay, no. maybe I in the BET so. meeting, no. I could say that we declined to vote on this item. Uh, we acknowledge that there is money for that, but we would like to... Uh, you know, that should be within an internal... Which the controller has indicated he's able to do. Right. We yeah. appreciated yeah. the disclosure. Yeah. We'd like to discuss it with the public here for a little bit, and, but we don't. Yeah. It, okay, so it, as long as I don't run into a problem where then I have somebody unclear as to whether or not the funds can then be spent. Uh, if that's going to work out all right, I'm, uh, then I'll, I'll be satisfied with that. Okay. Can I ask you a question? This is the budget worksheet for the buildup of roof, anticipated roof jobs for the town of Greenwich for the next four years. I don't see the coral roof on there. Can you guys tell me why this coral roof needs to be done? I'm not talking about appropriations or accounts or anything. Can you tell me why this coral roof needs to be done now on such an urgent basis? Yeah, what was I'm, the planning that went okay, in, why this, roof wasn't, why this roof okay, wasn't? The same, the same reason that if there's all of a sudden a sinkhole in the middle of Greenwich Avenue, even though Greenwich Avenue was not slated to be paved, they decided that that's more important than paving Elm Street, so they used funds from Elm Street. So what you're seeing here is a bundled project, and what you're doing is you're lapsing the $150,000 project. You have no authority to do that. What you do have authority to do is you do have the authority to transfer any uncommitted balance within the department, capital or operating, as per the town charter. You have that authority to do that. We, we have a longstanding tradition that we will not transfer across capital projects. So we can't say, hey, you know, Mesa needs some more money, so we'll cancel this roof project, we'll cancel that sidewalk, we'll cancel those trees, we're all board of ed, and we'll add the money to Mesa. Now, we're being told that it's a little different than that. This is not exactly like I'm, uh, can, I'm transferring funds out of 
a boat for the police department and, and buying yet more scuba equipment uh, as a different capital expenditure. That's not what's happening here. It's in the Marine here. Division. No, we, and, and although the, both of those would have been in the Marine Division of Police. Uh, what what's being told here is but that you can do that. what's to being told here is that these are funds that are in the count under a roof project. They've been earmarked for this roof or that roof, but we have appropriated funds for a roof project, and these are different elements within the roof project. But it's all approved funds for a roof project, so it's different from. Am I going to spend the money on the boat as I told the RTM, or am I now going to spend it on more um, more scuba equipment? The, the precedent you're setting here is you're just saying let's bundle projects, put money together, and whatever they run into, we'll just take out of roofs or windows or doors or carpeting, whatever you want to call it. If I, I had get a, that. If I had dollars approved for MISA and understood that so and so many dollars were, was intended for um, uh, for the seats and so and so many dollars was in, was intended for the stage, and I can move money between the seats and the stage, and I can do that because I had a succinct, discrete sum which was approved for MISA. I have roof projects and dollars that are approved for a roof project, and our controller is telling us that he's got that handled in under a single umbrella, and he can move it between elements of it without that being a problem. But it's all appropriated dollars for the roof projects which involves several roofs sequenced over time. And all we're doing is moving money between these component pieces of, uh, of, a, of, of a specific discrete appropriation for a roof project. So it's not quite like the separation of moving money between completely separate capital items. That was the issue that I raised, and I think Pete was quite comfortable with that. So here's if how Pete's this comfortable item got with it, to you. I am. Here's how this item got to you. I got this item from Leslie from the MISA Building Committee assignment. No, I mean. That's how I originally it, well, heard about this right. because, the, oh, let me finish. Right. Leslie Moriarty from the, or Leslie Tarkington from the Building Committee called me and said we have a roof thing and the Board of Ed was asking them to include this in the MISA project. No, no, no. Well. That's let, what your let, email let, says. I can read it to well, you. I can read like. the, I can forward the email to everyone. So we make the email public because I think how the, bottom, the bottom the bottom line of this is, is the, the this roof is, this is a control this roof was this roof was in our the the budget the, the BEOE printed, presented it was for not this in your ed specs for the Mesa building committee it was not in our ed specs for the Mesa building it has building. nothing to do with the Mesa project this right. it doesn't it may have some timing and, and but some it didn't come in it came logistics in logistics issues is not let Mesa. me finish how this got here the Mesa building committee had conversations about doing this. And I said, this is not in their ed specs. This is, they don't have an appropriation for this. This is not good. What are we trying to do here? So when I spoke to the Board of Ed, it was very clear they wanted to be able to take bundled projects and move them together. So I said to the Board of Education, the superintendent, I said, the problem you have here is, only, is a very simple problem. If the RTM was meeting after us this month, I'll pose you the other question. Would you approve a $150,000 roof as an interim basis because you have a roof with a problem? Yes, you would. You'd say, hey, what happened? You'd explain it. You'd take the 150 out of fund balance, and you would do your third roof project this year. I, I, I wouldn't have done that. I would have said, your problem, take it out of one of your other roof projects. Okay, that, 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 you're entitled to that. But my point is because we're trying to be expedient here, because we're trying to bundle projects, we're trying to make things so much easier, that doesn't make it right. And with roads, you do get, you get that barometer reading thing of what the roads are. And yes, they do make changes. They make changes. But when you approve the road blacktopping, and I'll go back to this four of you who did a great job, you talked about $3 million. We don't know exactly how much that's going to get us because we don't know the oil price. So we're really, when we bundle roads as an example, because I heard it mentioned three times today, I'm in 100% agreement. I'll stand by Peter and Roll 100%. But what you're really saying is we're going to do $3 million of whatever that gets us towards this list. But here, you have an obligation to the public, in my opinion. You've told the public, hey, this year we're going to do this roof, this year we're going to do this roof, and this is our plan. And we can change our plan. We have no problem. And that's what you're doing. You're changing your plan. Yes. Okay? You can do that transfer my cons by charter. My concern is once we start doing that, it's a really bad precedent, okay? I have said all along I would never vote for the transfer. I'd vote for an interim one. That's in a heartbeat. And if it means the RTM has to have another meeting, that's, that's a 
heck of a wrong right. reason to not do things but, the right but, way. But, but really, wouldn't that require if the sinkhole happens, and that'll be paving in the summer, we're going to require the RTM to come back for special meetings just to fix a road that wasn't planned no, to be fixed? No, no, the, the, when you that's talk what, about that's roads, what you're saying. You, but when, you're, when you talk about roads, you're, you're talking about a, a, a we have decided as a finance board, the RTM has agreed that we're going to spend up to three million in black topping. And then we have sidewalk repair money. We have other things. On this particular thing, we didn't we didn't we didn't say we we're going to spend three hundred seventy thousand dollars on roofs. We said we're going to do this roof for that, that roof for this. Is that there is a difference? Well, There's I'm not difference. sure that distinction though is dispositive. Uh, I, I I see this as a bundle a bundled program that gets shifted forward and back when situations are expedient and when when roofs or equipment or and there's a failing situation that we need to deal with, and I, I don't think they're exactly the same as you're saying. I think another example is the story that you know we heard this evening from Al and from Amy, and she, they were talking about you know restrooms and how they've moved the restrooms around. That's a bundled restroom, you know, a, a restroom program, and they talked about how this how the project that we are talking about in today tonight's budget had moved from year to year and they had slipped other projects in. I mean, we see it's six hundred thousand dollars, that's you know, four times the size of say this roof. You know, I hear you, Mike, but what you know, my opinion on this is the one that I said earlier. If we want to change a process that's been in place and that we've, you know, allowed to sort of work be happen for the last several years for Parks and Rec, DPW, BOE, then I think that that takes a very, you know, a discussion and we, under, we understand the implications of it and how we do it. I think money has moved around between these various and sundry projects. We may say X for this and Y for that, but that hasn't necessarily been the way, you know, it's been spent. Whether that's right or wrong, we thought they were, you know, programs. Um, but if we need to do something else, I'm certainly up for a further discussion, but I, I think this is a continuation so, of what we've been doing. Okay, just one other, let me just, one other step sure. further from that is the last few years we've been a board of ed say you got $9 million for capital. You decide what you want to do, you got $9 million. This year's a little bit more. But you didn't approve it like that. You approved it by individual we projects. Did. We did, but, but we've been a little hands off. At least my thinking is, you know, from my opinion, you get $9 million. You tell me what you want to do. You know, we'll go through it project by project, but that's, that's your money to spend. Well, this is a small. But that's like saying we want to raise the taxes 2.75%. That doesn't mean, hey, as long as you guys come up with a budget 2.75, go ahead, you're okay, do whatever you want to do. We didn't do that either. Uh, Here's uh, where I really I am. I have, I, have these, I have these crappy alternatives. <clears throat> Alternative number one is to call the thing a transfer, which I really dislike for all the reasons that you raised at the outset. This concept of laying out a specific project, getting RTM approval for it, and then taking the money for it and spending it on some different project the RTM didn't didn't approve at all. I view, that, to apply I, 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 I view that as being not good. Choice number two is let's handle this as an interim appropriation, which means it'll be approved, in fact, by the RTM in September. The or a special meeting. Or a spe well, okay, or a special meeting. Uh, both of those, I think, are terrible alternatives. I was offered, through the creativity of some people around me, a third choice. And the third choice was basically, you know, the way we've handled this thing on the books, it's really being handled as a roofs project, and it doesn't appear that we need to handle it as either a transfer or an interim appropriation. It can merely be made as an internal appropriation between sub-elements of a larger project which we've been funding from year to year, and we've called it Building Envelope and Roofs or something like that has been the title on it. And among those three crappy alternatives, with all the concerns that Mike has, few of which I disagree with, I thought, you know something, that of the three lousy alternatives, <coughs> that's the one that smells the least to me, and that's the one I'm going to vote for. I hate agreeing with you, but I do. But here's my last concern, which is sort of my ace in the hole. They open up this roof, and 150 doesn't cover it, and then they need an interim. Now you really got to go un unwind and explain all this. Well, if that concern. happens, I'm sure that's they'll, my concern. there will be disclosure and explanation. I mean, I think if we look at what we learned this budget with the Barn Park Master Plan Project, I, mean, I think 
had the farm pool been a separate project, it would have been a different. For 2.6. Yeah. So procedurally, can we decline to vote on this? This evening, because we we I, I the think, application I, I was think either you're a transfer, no action on it, <coughs> right? And then I just have to decide what to do. Right. It's neither a transfer nor an additional appropriation. Then, then at a minimum, to vote on then at a minimum, I want the minutes to reflect that we're doing so on the advice from the controller that that the funds can be met out of the existing account and does not require action by the uh, by the budget committee or the BET to accomplish. When this came out, I started looking at how many things are bundled in different various departments with no pointing at any one department. I, I tend to always look where this can go. I've talked to the architects of sort of the current capital CIP and all that, and it was never intended that we were going to bundle this. Leslie's point is well taken about... Well, Al Manelli we sat forward. in that chair tonight and, and, and listed off nine capital projects that he merely handles out of the 400 line of operating saying, that's what I do every year. Right. And, and a, a chiller for the, the senior citizens, the, a new, uh, new ventilating part. system for the pistol so range, they're, they're, they're all right. capital projects. But the, the, the pistol range, for instance, there's already they're a not. system there, no, it's just no, broken no, down. No, no, they're not. They, we heard from our budget director what the level is for a capital project, and they right. fall below that. They're not capital projects. Right. Okay. But I understand your point. It's it's you know we we blow an engine on a dump truck. We got during the middle of a snowstorm. We got to buy an engine. I get it. That's expensive. All right. So so we're deciding not to vote on this item. Um, I mean, I would prefer to vote, but if the three of you prefer not to, then that's how it'll be. Uh, but I do want the minutes to reflect that um, uh, that we're handling it in that way, based on the advice from the controller that the funds can be expended from the existing account without action by the Budget Committee or BET. You can vote zero to four to, to reject the item. Reject you're just, it. You're not voting on an inter interim No, I don't want to do that because I think it, that has the appearance that, has that we're indicating support. that we don't want the money spent on that project. Then you have to pull the item if you're not going to vote on it. Can you? You just have to take well, no action. I think that's what Jeff is saying. Pull it, but he just wants. To no, I, I, we so can't yes. pull it though. Yeah. I, I, I can't pull it, but we you can. Can't pull but it? we can. Not? We can not you act just on the item. The, the one from. Um, can add something to the PR seven. I think they'd be happy to pull it. Just, yeah, I think that if you, I think it, we've it, taken it, items off agendas at full BET meetings too. You could simply say this item is not ready for a vote. Though. We've had no, 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 no,
in a room slash transfer because I figured you need to decide. Okay, well, this item comes to us from the Board of Education, not the building okay, committee. But right. Mike, let us know if you're going to put this on the agenda because then, I mean, is this worth going through this whole discussion again? Is that the point you're trying to make? or? I would tend to think I wouldn't be sitting here if I didn't think this was worth it. No, well, okay, I understand that, but. Well, we can still have a discussion about it at the full BET meeting, even though there is no more application in front of us. Yeah. If, there's, if there's going to be a full discussion at the BET, I'm asking my colleagues here, do we still want to do what we're proposing and saying we took no action, or do we want to vote? I mean, you know, I, I think you other. have to raise this as part of your budget committee chairman's report. No, no, I certainly I, will do that. I certainly okay. will do that. But I'm still in favor of not taking an action here because it's neither a transfer nor an additional appropriation. Okay. It's not my first choice, but I'll go with that. I support that. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, we have PL2 next. But I would add that you're going to make some comments. Oh, I will make a comment, yeah. PL2 Pro Art Library. Uh, uh, I move that that be approved as a, as a routine item. I'm sorry, which one are we on? Uh, PL2 Pro Library. Oh, PL2. A second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So yeah. we're to the carry, uh, capital carry forward request. You want to do them all, bunch them all together? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 uh, other than the withdrawal of PR7. Uh, the playground money, the, uh, which was yeah. withdrawn. Uh, I'm going to move the uh, 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 recommendation of the approval of each and every one of those carryovers, each and every one of them, as routine items. With the exception okay. of the, the exception one that was removed. But I can imagine PR7. that 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 was withdrawn. Yeah. Okay. It was withdrawn. Yeah. So indicated. So, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. When we get to the minutes, yeah, I have just, a just So, can I make a comment? Are you on old business, new business? Well, just the uh, next thing is approval of the minutes, May 14th. No, it's old business and new business. Well, there's no old business, there's no new business. So I asked Roland if, because we haven't been getting the report on economic conditions because of ADP or whatever, so we now have in front of us at least the revenue side, revenue. which are looking good. They are looking good. They're down from last year. And the other thing to consider is this year we increased the budget for them. So you know, the revenues are down and the budget is up. So yeah. the increase in fund balance that we got like last year is not going to be as great. Although the rest of the revenues look very good. Okay. Thank you for asking for this. I think it's good discipline to have it. Can I bring up a subject that's neither? Let's, um, let's wait, 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 wait. Before you do that, let, let me just. We, I, we, we did not have that as an agenda item, report on economic conditions. So I move that we add the report on economic conditions to Under our agenda. new business. Wait, where does that usually come? Is that a separate line item, report of economic conditions? It's usually conditions? a separate line item, yeah. yes. So, Leslie, why don't you make a motion I, that that be she, added? She did, and I second. Okay. Request All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. And we just have the conversation. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so that uh, will be May 14th. So uh, I may, may, no, no. May I uh, request one small correction? Sure. Uh, may I direct your attention to page three? The pages are numbered. Yep. Uh, at we're, the middle we're, of the we're, page we're, comes uh, Nathaniel Witherell three. Yep. In the seventh line, if you would count down, uh, four, worth, uh, four words from the end of the line is the word removal. Uh, the correct word would have been remediation. Written confirmation from the environmental firm that the remediation was done in accordance with regulations. If I could, you're uh, right. It wasn't removed. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I move the minutes with that one correction. Yeah. You know, or so one I, change. Yeah. Uh, second it. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Did you get the change? Well, I, I wrote it here. Yeah, okay. Kathy, what do we usually do? Did they insert a different page? Um, I mean, I'll sign this and. Uh, your handwritten change is fine. Okay. Well, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. All right, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Second. Favor. Whatever. Aye. 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 823. So